Hello, everyone. We are happy to be here with you today in this podcast of Conquerances. I am Eleanor Fox at New York University School of Law, and I have the pleasure to be with Frederick Genie, who is a professor at ISEC in Paris, France, and is the chair of the OECD Competition Committee. So Frederick, it's really a pleasure to be here with you today on this podcast episode on cross-border issues, global issues. Um, And you are probably the world's expert in thinking about how should antitrust and competition law be um, molded to take account of all of the cross-border effects and world issues that really go beyond particular nations. Um, You were certainly on the ground floor on almost all thinking of global issues and, and antitrust. I remember when you were one of the wise men um, of the wise men report that was triggered and authorized um, by Karel van Meer when he was a competition uh, uh, commissioner at the European Union. And you and your colleagues wrote a report called the wise men report wise man's report, wise men report, uh, proposing a kind of global framework. And after that, there were many conversations, mostly within the WTO, uh, to try to get a global framework. Some people have said today, in light of the fact that the World Trade Organization is having a lot of difficulties in keeping pace with its mission, Um, that the competition effort within the WTO has failed. Is that right? How should we think about it? How should we think about the next steps to make competition law in the world uh, more coherent? Thank you very much, Eleanor, for this question. Uh, Well, I would start by saying that uh, it's questionable whether we have had the failure of the working group on trade and competition in the WTO, or whether there was a failure of the WTO itself, because uh, the reason why the work was interrupted was in principle to help negotiate the Doha round. And up to this day, the Doha round still has not been negotiated. And we know that the WTO is in a very uh, difficult uh, situation. Um, and uh, the, uh, the working group on trade and competition, by the way, was interrupted, but it was not disbanded. I mean, it still exists uh, formally. Okay. So maybe it was not the right place for this discussion. That's uh, one possibility, uh, because the uh, place was itself uh, uh, having other problems, problems that have nothing to do with competition. Now, Second, if I look at uh, what we did for reasons which I will uh, tell you, I think that uh, it was not really a failure uh, or at least uh, not a a complete failure. But I think there have been four main developments in there. The first one is that many developing countries which did not have a competition law, and we're talking about the early 2000s and the, the late 1990s and the early 2000s when this WTO effort was going on, many of those developing countries now have a competition authority, which was not the case. So two things, why do they have a competition authority? Well, I think that one of the things that uh, uh, the WTO working group did fairly effectively was to raise the issue of competition and raise the issue of the possible extraterritoriality of competition law, of competition violation. And uh, it focused, among other things, on international cartels or transnational abuse of dominance. 
And that resonated with a number of developing countries who said, well, yeah, I've never thought about it, but maybe we are the victims of, of those. And maybe having a computational instrument may be a good idea. And that's one of the reasons why, it's not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons why we've seen uh, a, a, a huge increase in the number of developing countries having a competition role. Now, at the time, the developing countries were thinking that maybe this was a Trojan horse used by the developed country to try to limit the power of their own developing firms. Um, and so they, they were fairly suspicious of uh, whether competition was uh, legitimate or not. I think that now there is global acceptance of the fact that competition is useful both for developed and uh, for developing countries. Um, uh, so that's the first element. The second element is that at the time, the trade interest and the competition interest were not so much aligned. Uh, trade liberalization was doing great uh, and uh, we were in waves of uh, successive, uh, 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 I mean, we had had all the, uh, the negotiations uh, between the creations of the GATT and then uh, uh, the WTO, and it had led to a considerable uh, liberalization of trade. But the competition community was very concerned about the fact that maybe the trade community did not really understand competition, that it was a monitored competition or administrative competition. Um, so the competition authorities were not so interested in uh, bringing the competition issues within the ambit of the WTO. And I think that this was part of the, one part of the problem. Uh, uh, what we've seen more recently, um, after the COVID, uh, pri uh, after the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID crisis, is that the trade interests and the competition interests are much more aligned, and they are aligned in the fight against protectionist tendency uh, tendencies, which are certainly much more powerful now than they were at the time, and are threatening both competition and international competition, and therefore trade and competition. So the second idea is that trade and competition are more aligned in their objective now than they were. The third element is that there has been a huge development in convergence and in cooperation. Convergence between countries that had uh, competition. I mean, I'm talking about soft convergence, the kind of convergence which is promoted by the OECD or by the ICN through discussion uh, best example of this is uh, the change in the uh, in Europe in uh, the uh, standard for merger control and moving from a dominant standard to a substantial uh, decline in competition standard, which is much closer to uh, the uh, U.S. standard and the uh, economic uh, standard. Um, um, so there has been a lot of convergence between all those countries that have competition law. And there's been quite a bit of development in the cooperation between uh, either at the bilateral level or the regional level between competition authorities. And this has been very high on the agenda of competition authorities. Uh, there has been quite a few development. There are, there's much more cooperation now than there used to be at the time, cooperation not only on, on teaching and, and uh, uh, technical assistance, but cooperation on cases, uh, exchange of information. For example, at OECD, we promoted the idea that uh, waivers could facilitate the exchange of uh, uh, confidential information. Um, and many countries have adopted uh, in their law the possibility to uh, ask for waivers and to exchange information with other jurisdictions. So it's not perfect, it's still voluntary. So you choose with whom you cooperate and with whom uh, you don't cooperate, but at least it is much more, uh, much more prevalent now uh, than uh, used to be the case. Um, finally, uh, with the digital uh, revolution, there has been a complete globalization of competition issues. 
uh, we have right now, there are 19 cases against uh, Google throughout the world. Uh, all those cases are exactly the same, same issue. Uh, the relationship between the platform and the complementers in the Google ecosystem. Um, and it seems to be clear that A, from the point of view of efficiency, and B, from the point of view of uh, not creating chaos, there would be a great desire to uh, have a more uh, simplified process to try to deal with the competition issues at the global level. So what's the future? I think that uh, there are three things that I can say. One of them is that we possibly need to invent new ways to cooperate. Uh, uh, one of the uh, idea would be uh, several jurisdictions coming together to, the, to, to arrive at a decision on a common issue. There's been an example already in the EU when the Swedish, the Italian, and the French competition authorities in the booking.com came to the same conclusion, same decision. Or they could be mutual recognition of decisions, or there could be an exchange of commissioners like in the Australia and New Zealand uh, case. Uh, but things that go beyond the exchange of confidential information. Um, second, uh, with the ICN and with the OECD, uh, there are uh, institutions there which are devoted to promoting cooperation among the members. Uh, uh, and I think that it is uh, uh, one of the areas, I mean, uh, where uh, new ways to cooperate uh, should be elaborated uh, uh, or new types of regulation for the digital sector uh, should be uh, thought about. The third level is, uh, I think that what we have seen as a development is the increase, uh, the, the increased interest in regional cooperation. Countries that are in the same region, whether we talk about the ASEAN region or whether we talk about the Latin American uh, countries or whether we talk about COMESA, know each other better and they trust each other more because they are neighbors. Sometimes they have the same past history, the same language, the same legal system. Uh, and uh, this, all those factors are factors that make cooperation between them much easier than uh, trying to pursue a multilateral agenda right from the beginning. So maybe one of the way to proceed is to facilitate uh, regional cooperations and then after that, you have regions to cooperate uh, with each other, which is, by the way, one of the mechanisms that we uh, suggested in the Von Milt report, uh, this very early report that you were talking about. We envisioned the possibility that it could be uh, a set of regional agreements that would finally converge uh, to uh, create a multilateral uh, system rather than a direct negotiation at the multilateral system. So, uh, Frederick, that's a really terrific plan and fantastic insights. Um, the, first, a short question, and then I want to comment on, on several of your points. Um, do you think that there is, in our future, a multilateral agreement on competition? In the, maybe and probably in the WTO, but could be elsewhere. Uh, if the WTO can be revived, I think that the logic uh, would dictate that there should be an agreement on competition. And the logic is the fact that uh, once you've gotten rid of the uh, state uh, governmental restraints uh, to trade, uh, you don't want private restraint to trade to come in and undo what the negotiators have done. So it's clear that... Uh, that the competition issue is the natural complement to the trade negotiation. So yes. I think the real question is, can the WTO be revived as an institution? Uh, and can negotiation restart in the WTO? If the answer is yes, I have, I'm sure, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm pretty sure that competition will come back as a necessary complement to trade. 
I think you are right that it should. It is a necessary complement to trade. I fear, however, maybe this is, this is a short term, but I fear that we are farther away from the prospect of an international competition framework agreement uh, than we were in other recent times in view of the increasing nationalism of nations. In the 1990s, we were on a trend towards cosmopolitanism in its best sense, meaning regarding the interests of others, looking out for the interests of people across the world and trying to make a system coherent, uh, a competition system coherent that would in effect <clears throat> help as many people as possible uh, without nationalistic impediments. Um, today, in so many nations, um, there is nationalism, there is the instinct to not cooperate, there is the instinct to, to fight trade wars, even more than competition wars. The competition people see the benefits of <clears throat> regarding the world on world restraints and on the trade side and trade representative side, um, there is great animosity, which I think is drawing us down. So for all of your first four factors um, about changes that have made maybe the world more sympathetic to internationalism and competition, there is this big cloud that cuts the other way. Um, so are developing countries now better ready to adopt an international framework? Yes, they are ready. Uh, they are better positioned to adopt an international framework. And yes, they do understand that competition is a very important tool and mode to help them and lift themselves out of their situations, which often include deep poverty. Um, in, and on your number two, yes, there are many ways in which trade and competition is more aligned, but here's where the nationalism comes in. And we are more at war in trade policy, certainly than in the 1990s. Uh, and your third point was we've done a huge amount of convergence and cooperation and we have, and that has brought us closer together. That is the nations and the jurisdictions of the world more on the same page. Um, I think some take that to cut in the other direction, saying, this is not me, but a voice saying, well, look, we don't even need a WTO or multilateralism. We're doing what we need to do by Convergence, more convergence, not entire, and cooperation. I th think that is a wrong proposition. There are many issues that really can be better solved on an international basis and really require an international conception to solve them. Um, and then fourth, your point on digitalization is completely global. And your point is entirely correct. It is global. All of the uh, these firms, which are mostly American firms, at least the big biggest platforms, their, their moves span the world. And as you said, many countries in the world are coming in to try to condemn their anti-competitive practices. I think this is an area where maybe we should focus on to try to imagine what is a better way for the world to grapple with these problems that are totally international. And your, um, your solutions, your paths towards solutions are really terrific. I think that we should be inventing new ways of cooperation. I think it's a real shame that China is not more in center stage on cooperation and has not at least yet joined the ICN. I think there are more ways to reach out to involve China 
in our conversations on coordination and cooperation. I think mutual recognition is a great idea that is not going to happen um, because there's a difference between the competition agencies and the law. An agency can't just say, oh yes, I accept this um, judgment of Australia because they got there first. And in addition, there's huge divergence of the law on exactly where we might need coherence more. And there is still huge divergence in the digital market segment um, on the law. The US now seems to be much more uh, sympathetic to world programs and, um, and efforts on the administration's level. Uh, that is looking to see where big tech has done abuses and trying to control the abuses. But our jurisprudence is not where the agency is. And unless we have changes in our law, the US is still an outlier on that. So I see some of the problems as more difficult than you, but I do agree totally that we need to be getting our getting together to talk about, for example, in digital, if you were the czar of the world, what is the best framework that you can imagine that would bring in all nations to more coherence and less dissension and disruption uh, so that for international issues, we could really have more of a common program. Well, two things. One of them is I don't share one of the comments that you made, which is the fact that you think that there is much more protectionism now than there was uh, in the past, and that this work against uh, the idea that uh, uh, it would be easy to uh, get uh, uh, countries to cooperate. If you look at the major conflicts in competition, uh, the Microsoft case, the, I mean, those, uh, the, uh, the uh, I mean, various uh, uh, mergers uh, case. They, most of them took place in the 1990s. That was a time when countries uh, were suspecting other countries from using their competition law for protectionist uh, reasons, and therefore were very upset or would come to OECD and said that, uh, uh, the European Union didn't know what it was talking about when it uh, 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 fined uh, uh, Microsoft. Uh, okay. All this is gone by the wayside. Now there's much more uh, uh, unity of views uh, about A, the value of competition and B, the, the general principles of competition. Now, even more so with the US maybe moving towards Europe, uh, time will tell, as you say, you're right. But so, yes, there are uh, tensions, uh, trade tensions, but I don't have any indication that they are stronger than the trade tensions which existed. I think that you minimize the trade tensions that existed in the 1990s. Uh, uh, hmm. So I, I do believe that uh, this is uh, uh, not a problem uh, not more of a problem than it, than it was uh, in the past. Uh, now, where I completely agree with you, uh, and I'm very keen to push the, uh, the digital agenda, is uh, because the digital agenda is both an agenda at the regulatory level, what is the role of competition, what should be the role of ex-ante regulation, if there should be ex-ante regulation, and it's a, a huge burden on the resources of competition authorities to try to take on those cases because in front of them, they have firms that are able to have extremely good lawyers uh, uh, and make life very difficult for competition authorities. So it is at a time when we are all learning because we have to adopt competition law to the digital sector because it's not applicable directly. In fact, uh, we're all learning simultaneously we all have an interest in trying to spare some of our resources, and we all understand 
that uh, it would make sense to have uh, right from the beginning as much unity of view as possible. So it's clearly an area where the push for deeper cooperation is, has the most justification and that's what we should do. And this is one of the reasons why at OECD, we have spent already an enormous amount of time and enormous amount of resources trying to look at uh, many different aspects of the digital sector. And we're continuing doing this uh, because ultimately if we could come up with both in regulatory terms and in terms of how you apply competition law to this sector, uh, good ideas, I think it could shape uh, 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 the, the future, help competition authorities, uh, create convergence uh, and facilitate cooperation among them. So yeah. second, I would I reiterate that in the short run, so if you ask me which institution, uh, I think that the OECD, at least for the digital sector, which requires deep thinking about how do you adjust competition law to a sector where you don't have firms, but you have ecosystems, uh, where um, uh, you have competition across market rather than having competition in markets, et cetera, et cetera. So we do have to uh, uh, find new tools. Um, I think that the OECD is, is certainly the organization that I can think of, which has the most uh, intellectual resources to try to uh, help uh, in, in this direction. Um, so if you ask me, uh, but I still want to say that at the level, at the regional level, uh, I was offering uh, the uh, mutual recognition uh, uh, as an example. I, I quite agree with you that it is difficult. And I like the difference that you make between cooperation, which is initiated by competition authorities on their own, and, and cooperation, which requires some legislative, uh, and it's much more difficult to have legislative uh, approval uh, for that. Uh, so maybe mutual recognition of, uh, but if a country, I mean, I'm not, uh, I think that it is going to happen that some countries are going to say, look, I don't have the means to investigate this. Um, there has been a decision in, those other countries. I just want those decisions to be applicable in my country, okay? Uh, and this is a way to bypass all the cost of doing the investigation themselves uh, uh, or selves. Um, I think that this kind of extraterri extraterritoriality, um, uh, which is related to mutual recognition uh, might develop if for no other reasons, because competition authorities need to uh, deal with scarce resources and uh, they don't have the means to deal with uh, uh, all those cases. So regional level and OECD seem to me to be ex two extremely good for us to try to push the issue of cooperation. So the, those are very helpful comments. Let me make a couple myself um, and then we, want, we should wind up soon. Um, first of all, a mutual recognition, a step down is positive comedy that we used to talk about all the time in the 1990s. We don't hear that word used very much today, but that ought to be a first step where the nation's authorities are pretty aligned on what they think the law should be in its application, say to certain practices of digital firms and say, you go ahead and do it first and therefore I don't have to spend my resources on it. Uh, that, however, um, brings me to a second thought which is where there are still huge divergences because I think where we have this multiplicity of suits and there are still huge divergences between US law at the moment, unless it gets changed and the rest of the world and that US isn't going to say, well, I'll sit back, you do it first and then I'm going to basically accept what you do. Another problem is think of the developing countries that actually want very much to take advantage of 
what EU is doing on containing the power and abuses of big tech. And can they? Uh, they would like to, and they would like to say, yes, the EU has gone first. EU has um, outlawed very specific practices, abusive practices, and we want the big tech companies to abide by that in the developing world. If big tech can segment their markets without inefficiencies, they're not going to simply say, oh yes, you can have the benefit of this too. There's going to be a fight over that problem unless big tech sees that it is in its um, image um, problems to comply around the world. So these are uh, issues to think about. Oh, go ahead, Frederick. Uh, just, just a very short comment. Um, Positive comedy is more difficult to accept. In fact, that uh, what I call mutual recognition, or, or uh, but uh, I'll come back to this, because positive comedy requires that in your decision-making process, you take into consideration the other country, positively or negatively, depending on the country. So it requires that you uh, you are constrained in what you can decide. Recognition doesn't, I mean, I completely agree that the US is not going to recognize uh, 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 other, uh, but it's not for the US. The question is whether, uh, whether Kenya, for example, uh, can say, look, uh, you know, I don't like what Google is doing in my country. I see that there's a decision in the EU which deal with, I don't know, self-preferencing. It seems to be entirely reasonable. I want to apply the remedies of this decision in my country. So therefore, I'm going to accept this decision as being the, the uh, a decision of my uh, competition authority, rather than fighting it out for several years with Google uh, at an enormous cost. Uh, okay, so that's, so it's a purely voluntary. I mean, I don't have to do that. If I want to open an investigation, fine. Uh, okay. But the question, we don't have right now a tool that would allow the Kenyan competition authority to say, I just want to import that decision because I think it's right. I think it answers exactly the problem that I'm uh, facing. I didn't ask them to keep Kenya in mind when they made their decision, but it doesn't matter uh, if we're dealing with Google or if we're dealing with uh, Apple, it's the same issue in Kenya as it is anywhere else. Uh, and uh, I just find it convenient uh, to be able to give force to this decision in my jurisdiction. Um, okay, so it's a much more, so in a sense, uh, it may be completely uh, theoretical uh, uh, and I can see why there could be resistance, uh, but it's, uh, I think it is less uh, constraining than positive committee because positive committee requires you when you make your decision to take into consideration the best interests of the other country which a recognition of other decisions would not uh, require. Yes, uh, that's a very good point. And, and yes, that might be a very good track for a country like Kenya to be able to get the same result as the EU and import it into its own law um, without the huge expenditure of resources. I want to maybe as our last point, I want to go back to um, institutions, uh, a point you raised with regarding the OECD. Um, so it, I think we both agree more has to be done. There are more issues that are truly international issues. They need an international thinking framework to solve the problems. And, um, and that we can't just stay with the institutions and the forms of cooperation as they are today. There's a step ahead that we must move. And you are saying you think that the OECD might be a good home. Would you think also, though, or maybe alternatively, that we need several of the institutions together, that it's not going to be OECD alone. We need to involve UNCTAD. Um, UNCTAD really is the place to go in thinking about developing countries' interests and putting together developing countries' voice. And we need ICN 
if it will move out of what some think is only antitrust all the time into thinking more broadly cross-border. Um, and those institutions, plus maybe, as Bill Kabasik and, and Rob Anderson have suggested, and you might have been suggesting too, um, some involvement of a think tank within the WTO. I won't just say WTO is too big and amorphous, but there are individuals and groups within the WTO that are still thinking very seriously about um, world trading competition issues. Okay, two, two or three things about what you said. I mean, first of all, uh, if you ask me whether international organizations should cooperate, I mean, the, the general answer is yes, of course. Uh, so I completely agree with you. Uh, and the three that you mentioned are pretty much the only three which are really interested in competition issues uh, uh, and where there is expertise. If you ask me, uh, is Onctad is a good place for thinking about the digital uh, sector? Uh, I would say, sure, to raise the issue. But I mean, we are in a field which is completely unknown where there is a need to have a lot of economic thinking as well as uh, legal thinking uh, to try to sort out how we could adapt the tool to a completely new set of problems uh, uh, and markets which are very different from the non-digital markets. Um, that's why I think that in this case, the OECD is best place because it does have those resources uh, to to do the, the, uh, the work, I mean, of thinking, of proposing, uh, uh, writing papers, suggesting, uh, okay. In other areas of cooperation, where it is more a question of competition authority coming together, absolutely right that uh, ONCTAD and the ICN are very good places to do that, A, because they have a wider uh, number of uh, members, uh, but B, also because they have all the competition authorities who are dealing with those issues, and they are the ones who know how they could cooperate better. So my answer was very much linked to the nature of the issue the in the digital sector, the fact that we have to reinvent competition law enforcement for the digital sector. In general, I completely agree with you that the cooperation between uh, ONCTAD, uh, ICN, and uh, OECD is very useful. And as a matter of fact, on cooperation, you may know that the OECD and the ICN produce joint reports uh, uh, every two years uh, uh, because we are completely aware of that. Uh, uh, and we also have programs with, the, uh, with ONCTAD. Uh, so yes, from the institutional point of view, we have three institutions there or compliments in general. Uh, when it is a, a, a highly intellectual issue, uh, it's good to have a, you know, a secretariat uh, made of lawyers and high powered economists to help think. I mean, it, uh, okay, so, but that doesn't mean that it cannot uh, take place uh, everywhere. There can be a division of labor with uh, the OECD and the OECD secretariat bringing uh, ideas and all three institutions discussing them. Those are wonderful ideas. Uh, I think perhaps you've given us the platform for, for moving forward in the world. And we should uh, stop at least temporarily our conversation on this point with hopes to move forward, perhaps using the ideas you have put forward. So thank you very much, Frederick Janie. It's been a pleasure to be talking with you today. And bye Thank to everybody. Much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Eleanor, for your very interesting questions. Uh